playing the tunes you just can't stop. Here's your look at the Waxwork Records Halloween 3 Season of the Witch Spinachers. It's almost time, kids. The clock is ticking. Gather around your turntables. This Halloween 3 season of the witch spinacher is all treat and no tricks. At the time of shooting this review, I'm just looking at the calendar. It's 98 days till Halloween. Is it too early for the song? It's apparently too early for the song. Before, though, we get a closer look at the Spinacher Trick or Treaters from Waxwork Records, let's take this trusty tape measure of mine, and I'm not going to measure every one of these because we need to, you guys have places to go, people you need to see. What I'm going to do is just measure one of them, even though you can see that the jack o' lantern seems to be the tallest of the three. Let's measure off just the witch for now. And by the way, if you guys are curious to pick these ones up for yourself, leading into Halloween, of course, or you can really just display them all year round, I'll provide the links down below that will take you on over to Waxwork Records. Just the witch and just the witch alone, you're looking at the spinature standing 4.7, 4.7 inches. And again, you can kind of just gauge a little bit more than that for the jack-o'-lantern and the skull. I think actually the skull is a little bit shorter than the witch. So on average, on average, we're going to go with 4.7 inches. Is it really too early for the song? I'm being told yes. I, I, I don't think it's too early. Switching that though over to centimeters, you're looking at the spinachers of the trick-or-treaters being 12 centimeters exactly. Now for some size comparisons, we can bring in the previously looked at Michael Myers, of course also produced as a spinacher. Sad news though, let me just move all these over here, move these over here. What, what, what's, all the, what's all the sad news? Why so glum chum? Well, here he is. Here they are next to Michael Myers that we looked at earlier. You may, may or may not be able to see what's saddening this humbled reviewer right now. Unfortunately, his scalpel broke. Let's just pick this guy up for a second to show you. This was something I really was worried was going to be the problem. The little scalpel on the end of it, because it's made of such brittle plastic, broke right off. Not right after I did the review of it, but I had put it on display and I took it down because I was going to do the comparison with the trick-or-treaters and sure enough I don't know what whether it got hooked on to something but it broke right off I guess it does still does in a way look like a blade so I'm just going to go ahead and go with that I don't even know where that hook piece actually went to but just be careful if you are picking these pieces up for yourself specifically the Michael Myers that little hook on the end of the scalpel it broke like I said snapped right off anyways Putting it on display, though, with the rest of the trick-or-treaters, it's sort of strange to see Michael Myers displayed with them until, of course, we watch Halloween 2018, where they did put them in as a cameo. And I think they're also going to be put in for Halloween kills, too. But kind of gives you at least an idea of how the spinachers, I was going to say figures, but how the spinachers sort of stack up with one another. Putting, though, the trio back together, and we'll have a look at these individually. Speaking of individually, if memory serves me correctly, which it doesn't always because I'm getting slightly older in the years, I believe I actually ended up ordering these over on Waxwork Records as individual figures. I ended up having to check out each one of them as opposed to them selling them together. Anyways, if you guys are interested, I'll provide those links down below in the video description. Let's start first with the witch. The one thing you will probably already see with looking at each one of them is that they have different trick-or-treating bags. I think that's a nice little touch as opposed to just giving them the exact same bag over and over and over times three. Let's go ahead and pick up the witch first and we'll have a look at her. Now again, the idea of these being spinachers, if you are new to this idea, is they all have holes on the bottoms of their bases and these fit then onto the turntable dowel in the middle of your album. You know, the album that you spin on your turntable if you have a turntable. I don't have a turntable yet. I'm hoping to pick up one though. But this basically, these go onto those, and then as the album is spinning, the spinachers do exactly what their namesake says. They spin around. Now, if you don't have a turntable or don't plan on displaying these with a turntable, they really are just nice showpieces, just little, you know, little statues that you can put on a shelf. Like I said, though, let's start first with the witch. This one does have the hood up, of course. I really like the sculpting of the hood. Done here, I'm guessing, in a dark black plastic, and then what they've done is just brushed over top of it the gray, so you've got those that two-tone effect. The witch has eyes, though painted quite 
dark and black. It's really hard to actually make out the eyes until you're looking at up close and personal. In a way, it reminds me of Michael Myers, the way that they, the similar way that they painted his eyes. Coloring on the face is actually quite good. It's not just straight green. There's a lot of different stuff going on there. Well, green mostly, yes. There's different shades of green at play here. Darker green, lighter green, sort of accenting the areas of the wrinkles on the fore, on the forehead there. And then you've got almost more of a swamp green around the areas of her eyes, or its eyes, because of course we don't know the child wearing this mask right now. This one does have the open mouth, the little visible tongue on the inside. It also looks like it's got teeth, gnarly looking teeth. Some are teeth, some are there, and some are gone. A couple of little spots there, little warts, chin on, on the chin, on the nose, and actually one off to the side here, almost concealed by the hood, just off to the side on her, on her chinny chin, or on her cheek there. Chin, cheek, chin, cheek. You can see that this one is holding the bag. And sort of what they have done with the bags in all the three cases, it looks like they've applied labels. Not that these are labels that you can peel up, not that I really would want to be starting to peel these up, but they look like they are definitely things that were applied after the, after the fact. The bag is sculpted pretty decently, though. Brings a little bit of extra color to the table, and of course, if they're trick-or-treaters, you would want to give them trick-or-treating bags. Some nice additional lining there of orange, and in all the cases, if you're looking at the back of them, they do have their silver shamrock badges there, the little medallions you can see right there. So I like the fact that they actually did put the little medallions on there, and that, that's actually the case on all three of them. The Witch is probably my least favorite of the three, but again, I think in a case like this, if you're going to be picking up one, you're probably going to be picking up all three of them. My favorite, though, has always been the Jack-O-Lantern. I'm just going to move these guys over a little bit. So let's go ahead and pick up the Jack-O-Lantern and have a look at this one. This one, actually, his trick-or-treating bag, I don't know why I'm giving it a sex, but this one does have a trick-or-treating bag that kind of looks like underwear. Looks like he's got dirty underwear that he's carrying around. I guess that's where he's storing his treats. And the treats, similar to the witch, look like they're just applied labels on the inside of the bag. The hand sculpts are nice on both sides. Lighter skin on all three of them. Actually, it seems like the skeleton has the more warmer color skin tone versus uh, the other three that figures that we're going to be looking at here. Um, this one has the long sleeve shirt. Nice detailing done onto the back of it. And again, there's that Silver Shamrock badge right on the back there. It says Silver Shamrock Novelties. Jack Leonard has always been my favorite of the three masks. So much so, actually, of the three masks, the only one I have in my collection as an actual mask is the Jack Leonard. Picked that up from, I think, Trick or Treat Studios, if memory serves me correctly. Really nice paintwork, done, though, done onto the Jack Leonard face. Again, you got lighter oranges, darker oranges happening there. Can't see eyes in this case, just solid triangular shapes. Solid. You can't even see straight through it. And of course, you've got the area on the top that normally on a jack o' lantern you'd be able to open up and put the candle inside. You wouldn't want to do that with a child's head, though. Very, very cool. You know, I would be open to the idea of them releasing a, a variant of this guy with the little worms and bugs and stuff crawling out of his eyes. I think that would be a fun touch with or without the undies bag. I don't know. There's the jack o' lantern. And the last one we'll have a look at is the skeleton. I've asked around, not a long list of people I've asked around, but seems to be the popular consensus is a lot of people seem to like the skeleton. I kind of like the skeleton second, and then the witch, of course, third. This one has some really nice detailing done to it. Cracks across the side of the mask. Little indentations also go a long way as well. It's not even just gray either. It's kind of like some darker airbrushing of beige that they've added in there as well, just to bring a lot of those details out. Now, this one has a different outfit. This one has the the skeleton body. Again, a long sleeve shirt. This one's slightly rolled up here. And it seems like the skin tone on the hands, like I said earlier, a little bit warmer here on the skeleton. And like the others, even though the bag is differently designed, and this one clearly doesn't look like undies. It looks like a paper bag. But again, you've got the little label on the inside there, giving us the idea of those are supposed to be treats. I guess those are supposed to be treats. The, the very idea that they did give them bags, though, are that's a nice touch. And even the fact that they label it. I mean, they do look in some cases like labels, but at least it looks like they're supposed to be candy on the inside. I wouldn't expect them to sculpt wrappers and, and little candy bars and lollipops and stuff like that sticking out from the bag. So at least they gave the, the indication, the indication that there's treats inside each one of these bags. And quickly looking at the back of it, there's the silver shamrock badge. 
nicely painted there as well in silver. Uh, the, for, for the fact that these really don't have lower legs, I mean, clearly, as we've been looking at all these spinatures, they don't have a lower half going for them. But they're nice little statued pieces, really, to be putting on display. I don't know if I would be putting these on out, these out every single day, all year round. These I might actually keep for special occasions, specifically Halloween. I think when we start getting the decorations out around the house, I probably could see myself getting these guys out and be putting them on display either as a, on a shelf, as a shelf piece, or eventually as I get a turntable, I would really like the idea of being able to put on one of these onto my turntable. Probably my favorite, the Jack Lantern, as I'm playing some, you know, Halloween classics, you know, like Monster Mash or uh, Mr. Sandman, another one of my favorite Halloween songs. What are some of your favorite Halloween songs? Let me know down below in the comments section. But really, again, nice little fun collectible pieces brought to us from the folks over at Waxwork Records. Boy, am I bummed about that scalpel breaking off on Mikey Myers. I don't even know what happened, what events led to it breaking, but I even knew at the time of doing the review of that Michael Myers spinature that that scalpel was going to break. I kept thinking it in my head, and I may have said it a couple of times out loud, that scalpel's going to break, that scalpel's going to break, and whatever it was, the events that led to that happening, it snapped off when I was taking it off the shelf. It may have caught on to something, or I may have grabbed that part of the scalpel by mistake. <laughs> Broke right off. That made me sad. Luckily, though, I don't think anything's going to be breaking here on the trick-or-treaters. Everything looks pretty durable on them. And even the fact that they are holding the trick-or-treat bags with the jack-o'-lantern in the middle, sort of looking like he's carrying around in undies, his undies of candy, undies of candy. I don't think there's anything that's really going to be breaking on these. And really, these aren't going to be something like Michael Myers that I'm going to be displaying all year round. I think these ones are going to be kept specially for Halloween when I put them all on display. Really, with the rest of my stuff, which usually is, I guess, probably like August... August, September, somewhere around that line. I mean, some, some people like to just display their Halloween decorations all year round, and then they just sort of add on the Christmas effects to make it look a little bit more like Christmas time. But if not for that, all year round, Halloween. And those are the kind of friends I'd like to meet and hang out with. Now, the good thing about these is that I think they're still in stock over on Waxwork Records. Again, I'll provide the link down below. Strangely enough, I think you have to buy them individually. Not in the sense that you have to check them out, ship one at a time. I mean, that, that, I mean, what company would be built on that sort of infrastructure? But the idea is that you would have to add each one of these to your cart as opposed to, I think there was just the set. I don't think there was where you could, you know, buy all three of them at the same time. It works the same way. It just means there's less steps and there's more likely a chance where one may sell out over the others. But I would imagine that everyone buying one would probably buy the other two as well. I'm making assumptions that I really can't back because... There may very well be somebody that's just going to say, hey, you know, I'm going to pick up the witch and I don't need the other two. And that's a friend I really don't think I want to have. That's that's a strange person. Why would you just be picking up one trick or treating? You really need to get all three of them is what I'm saying here. They're nice little show pieces, whether you have a turntable or not. I fall into the not category right now, but these are great looking display pieces, whether you decide to display them on a turntable or not. Have you picked up any of these? If you have... Let me know whether you picked up all three of these or if you're one of those strange people that just picked up one of them. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I just need the witch. I don't need the other two. Really, you don't want you don't want the other two? No, 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 I'm fine. I'm just content with the witch. Very weird. If you guys are new to this channel, enjoying all the content you're seeing, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. Turn the bell notification on and keep your peepers peeled to this channel because there will be, in fact, more reviews. What, more reviews? Is that what we're doing here on this channel? Yeah, all the time. All the time. You, you must be near here. Lots of stuff coming your way, guys. So as always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.